It's been a minute since I've done a movie review on this channel. Maybe more like an hour, but uh, I just watched this one on Tubi. I don't have the DVD or the Blu-ray because it's digital. It's on Tubi for free if you want to check it out. Uh, but I can hold this up, my iPad. It's Firewalker with Chuck Norris and Louis Gossett Jr. And uh, in 1986, Chuck Norris made one of the best movies of his career. That was Delta Force. And he also made this movie, which is not one of the best of his career, but it's one of the funniest, I would say. Maybe for comedic value, it's not quite up there with Sidekicks, which I love that movie, um, co-starring Jonathan Brandis. But um, so in 1986, Chuck Norris decided to try his hand at comedy. It might have been his first try at comedy. Um, I believe 86 was also when he had that cartoon and toy line, Chuck Norris Karate Commandos. Uh, but Firewalker, I was just looking for something, um, first of all, <laughs> old, old-fashioned. I really like watching some of the old classics. Um, I'm not sure if I watched this when I was a kid. If I did, it was completely forgettable. Uh, didn't rank up there with Indiana Jones and those other tre treasure hunting movies. But it's kind of funny how as the years go by and we get more and more stuff that is focused on... Uh, certain things that uh, uh, aren't all about uh, fun and adventure um, and all the other stuff that all the all of us Gen Xers grew up on loving. Uh, it, it's uh, I'm finding when I go back in time and watch some of these older movies, some of the ones I thought were very forgettable are actually becoming a lot more entertaining compared to some of the stuff that's coming out. Case in point, so there was a new Indiana Jones movie. Was it last year? Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. And uh, I would honestly say that Firewalker was a heck of a lot more entertaining than uh, than Dial of Destiny. And I would say even more entertaining than Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, too. Mainly because those last two indie movies are so disappointing because we had the original trilogy to compare them to and you know, they were a, a big step down from the first three. Whereas Firewalker, <laughs> I wasn't expecting anything. I was expecting a, a treasure hunting movie with Chuck Norris and Louis Gossett Jr. So um, it probably over delivered from what I was expecting. Louis Gossett Jr. is what makes this movie fun and funny. Definitely. It would not work without him. Uh, Chuck Norris, he's an action guy. Um, his martial arts not only still stands up, by today's standards, uh, but is uh, exceptional by today's standards. There's so many times where he'll do like a spinning back fist or that Chuck Norris kick that comes at you from the side. And I just go, wow, that is that is gorgeous. Like it's when I watch a, it's like when I watch an old uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme movie and uh, the helicopter kick. Um, I never thought of Chuck Norris as being graceful. It's just who I grew up on. That's how martial arts on screen was done and now comparing it to a lot of martial artists in movies that have come after him uh, watching the original master do it on screen or one of the original masters Chuck Norris uh, I'm noticing more than I did back then how fluid and graceful and just perfect on screen he is like Jet Li he just or Jackie Chan or, or Bruce Lee they just knew how to do it on camera uh, but Louis Goss Jr. makes all the jokes work there's a slight attempt at romance in this movie. Chuck Norris not known for his romance, romantic roles. Um, Lone Wolf McQuaid is one of the only other movies I can think of where he had kind of sort of a romantic interest. I'm remembering something with Mud. <laughs> Maybe there was a makeout scene in Mud in uh, Lone Wolf McQuaid, but um, they, they try to get a spark going in this movie, but uh, Chuck Norris is is one of those rare breeds in Hollywood that always said no. There, uh, he drew a distinct line between on-screen romance and um, and his family life. So it reminds me of uh, Ralph Macchio. Uh, if you ever wondered why uh, Ralph Macchio doesn't have a girlfriend in Karate Kid Three, after he had one in Part One and Part Two, um, the script originally called for uh, Ralph Macchio's character. Uh, Daniel to have a girlfriend in Karate Kid 3 but he had gotten married by that point and he didn't want to be kissing some other woman on screen while he was married 
Now, most people in uh, in the acting world will go that well. That's ridiculous. I mean, you know, acting is acting, and real life is real life, and that's just pretend. Uh, but it doesn't always work that way. And sometimes, well, oftentimes, the uh, stuff on screen and on the movie set bleeds over into real life. And I think it's just pretty silly to ignore all the times that on-screen romances have ruined off-screen relationships. Uh, so I'm with Chuck and with Ralph Macchio and Neil McDonough is another one. Refuses to have like on-screen kisses with any other actresses that aren't his wife just because he's uh, so strong in his faith and his beliefs. Uh, it might hurt in the short term, but in the long run, I think I think you get taken care of by the big man upstairs when you uh, uh, go that path. So there is a little tiny hint of a romance in this movie, and uh, I was actually pretty surprised that Chuck shares an on-screen kiss with the lead actress in this movie. Uh, and it's uh, it's as awkward as you imagine it would be, and uh, it's kind of funny because once it happens, um, I mean, it's even they kind of turn away so that they're not like just snogging away at each other. Um, but after that happens, it feels like the rest of the movie, there's never like a hint of any romance between them again. It's more like they're buddies than um, a romance gets sparked between them. And then for the rest of the movie, they're, uh, they hug <laughs> a couple of times. Um, no more like big... Indiana Jones and Willie Scott or Indian Marion, you know, dip the girl and, uh, and go for it. <laughs> they, they just hug. <laughs> so I, I kind of wonder if they gave it a shot in that one scene by the, by the river. And then they just went, nah, did that feel right for you? No, it didn't feel right for me either. So they just, they, they just decided it would be a buddy film from then on. Uh, so the, the fight scenes are the highlight. Uh, Chuck Norris kicking butt in a bar is always a big plus for any movie. Um, some very familiar faces show up in this movie. Very surprising because, I mean, this was a B movie when it came out, but another interesting thing about watching old movies is some people who weren't huge stars back then or legendary uh, end up becoming very well known for other movies and then you get to go oh wow that guy's in it so john reese davies is in this movie looking uh looking good looking svelte uh he had become a little more portly towards the uh end of the 80s and throughout the 90s but right here he's in his uh, raiders of the lost ark shape and uh and he's in the shape he is in today uh i'm happy to say i saw him a couple of weeks ago at uh, fan expo canada in toronto and uh he's he's looking good today and uh, in this movie he does what I think is the first time I've ever seen him do an American accent and it's like a southern accent and John Reese davies has that beautiful eloquent British voice and it's so weird to hear him do anything other than his natural speaking voice so that was uh, a little different and little hints of Colonel Kurtz from uh, um, Apocalypse Now in this movie uh, with his character. He's not in it a lot, but he's uh, he's a very pleasant surprise when he shows up. Part of the cool thing about this tandem, tandem of Chuck Norris and uh, Louis Gossett Jr. is that their Indiana Jones rolled into one. Uh, so wherever they go, they know everybody. Like they know this guy and this guy's an old friend and this guy's an old acquaintance that can help them or this guy's an old enemy that is out to get them. They run into one at the beginning of the movie and uh, the way they escape from their life-threatening situation that they're left in is actually quite clever. Pretty simple, but quite clever. So right off the bat, I thought, well, okay, that this movie isn't going to be just totally dumb. Like, it's got some cleverness to it. But another familiar face that shows up in this, if you love Predator, Billy shows up in this, Sonny Landham. And uh, he plays a, as my buddy Matt on Armchair Directors would say, uh, scenery chewing villain. He really chews the scenery. So if you want Sonny Landon being larger than life, uh, that's that's in this movie. And uh, he's got the big uh, Billy laugh from Predator as well. Uh, this was one year before Predator. So he actually did this movie before Predator. And um, it, 
I don't know, maybe they saw him in this movie and said, we need this guy for Predator and we need that laugh in Predator for the Predator to mimic it because it is a, uh, it's a very haunting, uh, ominous laugh. Uh, some scenes look cheap. You know, I'm, I'm talking about how fun this movie is, but uh, it, it was a B-movie. What I think it has over some of the other really cheap, quick uh, Indiana Jones knockoff movies of the 80s, like uh, King Solomon's Mines, Alan Quartermain and the Lost City of Gold, and there's like a whole bunch of other cheap movies. Is those movies, the sets were pretty cheap, but they lit them way too brightly. And the way you hide the cheapness of the set is make it dark. Less is more. Uh, that's what Spielberg did with the Indiana, Indiana Jones trilogy. He wasn't afraid, or his cinematographer wasn't afraid to light things darkly, make things more spooky, and hide. You know, sometimes the lack of authenticity in these ancient or supposedly ancient sets. And uh, it was nice that when they finally get into like the the catacombs in this movie, that it's lit not as well as a, a, an old Spielberg movie, but uh, in that vein, dark. They go dark and try to go creepy and stuff. And then some scenes do look pretty cheap. Uh, unfortunately, I think the whole finale looks like one of those big cheap sets and uh, you know the the hokey gotta escape the life-threatening situation so it never really escapes that b-movie feel to it but i don't know maybe uh that's something you want and that's something we've lost um especially over the last 10 years now that anybody with a laptop can do some really amazing special effects, green screening, deep faking, the whole uh, look and feel of a fun, cheap B-movie has really gone away. Like a, a high school student can make a movie that looks better than uh, Attack of the Clones. Like it's pretty crazy how, how cheap it is to make a really uh, high production looking movie. So this is another reason it's fun to go back and watch these old movies that were all practical effects, things built by hand, by uh, prop makers, um, stunts that were all 100% performed by uh, real people and not green screened on stunts or CGI'd heads onto other bodies and stuff like that. So it, it definitely has a charm to it that has been lost uh, over the last decade or even uh, two decades. And uh, it's free. Uh, for now on Tubi. So sometimes they cycle their movies out. So if you're watching this review in uh, a couple of uh, months, maybe it'll be gone by then. But for now, uh, it's free on Tubi if you want to watch it. So I'll put the link down there in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, good, clean family movie. I don't recall any swearing in it. Uh, no like graphic gore. Someone gets shot, but it's it's not like spraying blood and like a bloodbath or anything like that. Um, no no gratuitous sex or anything like that. Just a good clean family movie, or at least what used to be considered a, a pretty good family movie. Um, obviously, there's there's people out there who, if someone gets kicked in the head, that they'll cry bloody murder, even though it's not murder. It's just a kick in the head, but. Uh, in terms of old-fashioned, just good, clean action, I think it's a, a fun one to just sit your kids down. Definitely, probably more appropriate than modern Star Wars, where people are being impaled and heads being <laughs> severed with lightsabers and stuff. I'd say way more appropriate um, for kids. But, you know, with any parent, obviously, the, the most responsible thing to do is just to go through it yourself before you watch it with your kids and then decide on your own if if this is something you want your kids watching or if there's certain parts that need to be fast forwarded or there are eyes covered for that. Uh, so yeah, Firewalker, Chuck Norris, Lewis Gossett Jr. Um, what's really cool about Chuck Norris is he didn't really come off as one of those larger than life 80s action stars that were always um, trying to have the spotlight solely on them. Um, Chuck Norris to me seems like one of the guys who was always trying to share the spotlight because it it just made the movie better. It helped um, since he wasn't the the best dramatic actor, 
he could do the action like like nobody else could but he needed help with you know some of the actual um dialogue delivery and that's why delta force is one of his best movies because he's got lee marvin right there beside him um carrying the load uh also lone wolf mcquade which i think is chuck norris's best movie he's got david carradine there carrying the load a great villain to play off of as well as uh robert beltran um co-starring in there also helping carry the load so this is another case of that that it's not the chuck norris comedy movie uh, Louis Gossett Jr. is, you know, the co-star of this movie. He's not the little buddy who tags along. They're a team, and each of them is just as important to uh, make the movie work. Uh, it's not just all Chuck, and then Louis Gossett Jr. Uh, showed up to do a little bit of stuff. He's actually really, really funny. He's one of the uh, unsung uh, great legends of uh, movies. Uh, it's too bad that he's not remembered for more than just Iron Eagle. But uh, there you go. If you're uh, also a Lewis Gossett Jr. fan, then Firewalker is is you know a great, fun, funny Lewis Gossett Jr. movie as well. And that's my Firewalker review. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to check it out on Tubi, if you have any thoughts to share, then scroll down and go to town. And to join the tribe, hit subscribe. Have a day. <laughs>